per Justin Trudeau's executive fiat, the mandates at the federal level for borders for air travel will be coming to an end on September 30th, or specifically on October 1st. So if you're uh, traveling on an overnight flight September 1st to, or sorry, September 30th to October 1st, you get to like dramatically rip off your mask mid-flight. If you take off, you may need to arrive camp, but by the time you land, you don't. It's all going to be very exciting. It's Canada. People are probably just going to keep their masks on, but you never know. But I do want to talk about this because I, I devoted considerable attention last week to saying even with all these reports coming out that the mandates are going to be gone by the end of this month, people should not be too excited. And I was not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I always try to be a, a ray of sunshine if possible. It's very difficult sometimes, but I try. But it was more that the government has never apologized. And it's not, I'm not one of these like really emotional and overly sentimental people that's like, no, you didn't say I'm sorry. So it's, it's more than that. It's because the government says still, and they were clinging to this when they made the announcement yesterday, that this was all about the science and that they haven't changed their minds. The science has changed. It was unsafe to do this a week ago, but now it's safe. And it's the same rationale that they'll use if they bring it back. Because when every other country in the world, for the most part, made the announcements that it was gone, they did it in a celebratory way. When restrictions ended in Israel, when restrictions ended in the UK, when restrictions ended in most American states and so on, it was done because they said, yeah, we beat this. It was like George Bush with the Mission Accomplished banner. Justin Trudeau, while making the announcement that the mandates were ending, said this. We stepped up during this pandemic as individuals, as communities, to get vaccinated uh, quicker and to higher levels than just about any other country in the world. And because of that, studies have shown that we avoided hundreds of thousands of deaths because of the decisions uh, that municipalities, that provinces, the federal governments took during this pandemic that kept people safe. And right now, the best thing each of us can do to prevent a resurgence of COVID-19 as winter approaches is to make sure that you get up to date in your uh, vaccinations with the new formulations coming out that'll keep us even safer. And that'll mean that we won't need to uh, take further steps, uh, hopefully, uh, if everyone gets vaccinated. So he's not even saying it's over. He's saying, well, it's over for now, but everyone has to get vaccinated because if you don't, I might have to do something else as though he has no choice, as though he has no autonomy. And it is this sort of Damocles hanging over people's heads that was exactly why when they suspended the air travel vaccine mandate so long ago, I said, I hope the lawsuit carries on. And that lawsuit has been thus far carrying on. Because the government thinks that all of this was good. The government thinks all of this was helpful. The same government that thought uh, we had to put people on planes after they have proven they're vaccinated was a good idea is also the government saying, well, we followed the science, so just trust us. And it's on you. It's not, it's not our decision. It's your decision whether we get more restrictions. And this is what's happening now. They're moving the discussion. They're moving the narrative to, as you heard in that clip, up-to-date vaccinations. So if they do put in restrictions, it's not even going to be where your two doses is enough to classify you as fully vaccinated. It's going to be where you need to have a vaccine within the last eh, perhaps six months, maybe even three months. You never know. And that is the only way you get to say that you are up to date. And booster mandates like they have at Western University in London, Ontario, are going to be what replaces the old version of mandates. And just taking a look at the Western situation... On the weekend, the Superior Court of Justice, before whom lawyers for the university and also Lisa Bildy, representing a number of students affected by the vaccine mandate, argued their case, and the court sided with Western. The court released its decision on the weekend saying that Western has the right to manage its own affairs, and it's Western's authority that decides whether this policy is valid or not. It was not a constitutional challenge. And there's a reason for that, because they were trying to go after the school on very narrow grounds on the collection of privacy and the obligations and regulations on that. And the court still found a wide latitude, a wide berth that it was able to afford Western that basically say Western can set a policy and then come up with whatever collection mechanism it needs to to enforce that policy. 
And I find this all to be so disheartening. And, and it's an example of why the legal battles are important, but they're also not the be-all and end-all, because I, I have a degree of pessimism about where courts are going to land on these issues, because we know that courts have given governments uh, a lot of deference on this because of the pandemic. They've given governments a lot of latitude to say, well, yeah, it's a deadly pandemic, so even though you're violating constitutional rights, I guess it's you know demonstrably justified, reasonable limits, free society, all of that stuff. That section one test that most Canadians know now because it's the one that blocks, the one that blocks so much liberty from taking hold in policy because it focuses on government's rationalization for infringements on freedom. So right now we have at the federal level them saying we have to get rid of these mandates now because the science no longer science no longer requires them. And then at uh, one particular university, you have the mandate that is going beyond any mandate the federal government has put in, which it claims is rooted in science. It's amazing how science can say so many different contradictory things. And this is, I think, where the important truth is that people need to understand here. It's not about politics. It's not about the law. It's about culture and it's about society. Government responded to society. It was people. People wanted restrictions. People wanted restrictions. Justin Trudeau won an election on the backs of threatening the unvaccinated by taking away their right to work for the public service, to work, uh, to ride a plane, to ride a train, to all of that. That was something that Justin Trudeau was rewarded for doing. People wanted it. Now, have people changed in the last year? Yes, you throw the convoy, you throw other protests, you throw uh, more fa pandemic fatigue in there. Totally agree, people change. But the reality is the piece of paper that we call the Constitution is not going to save you. Justin Trudeau, the Liberal Prime Minister, is not going to save you. It's winning over the hearts and minds of people that is, I believe, the only way we turn the page on this.